We sometimes prone our patient, don't we? We turn them face down when they're really sick. Why do we do that? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you hit the bell, you'll get notified every time I release new content. In order to understand proning, let's first talk about two models. The first is the sponge lung model. Imagine this sponge in here is the patient's lung and at the minute, I've got the patient lying on his back. Now because of the endothelial damage to the lung, it fills up with fluid and that's one of the big problems in ARDS, which is why the patient struggles to breathe. So this lung is full of fluid and as you can see, that fluid will try and drain downwards. So you can see here that the fluid is draining to the posterior aspect of the lung or the dorsal side. If I tip it up, it then drains downwards. So if I turn the patient's over, it will start to drain the other way. This helps us understand the sponge lung. Fluid in the lung will increase its weight, which then squeezes out the gas from the dependent regions. In the case of the supine patient, these dependent regions are at the back of the lung or the dorsal part of the lung. The fluid in the ARDS lung does not behave in quite this way. It is more evenly distributed than this, but this model does help explain how the increased lung mass squeezes out the gas of the gravity dependent lung regions why the lung densities shift when moving from supine to prone, and this can occur in a matter of minutes of changing the patient's position, and how PEEP acts as a counterforce to the compressing pressures in the dependent lung. We need then to move on to talk about the shape matching model. There is a difference in shape between the lung and the chest wall, which leads to another model as some of the effects of proning the patient. The lung normally has a conical shape, with the dependent side being the base and the non-dependent side being the apex. And when the patient is supine, you can see that shape here. The apex of the triangle is at the front of the chest, the ventral and the base of the triangle is at the back or the dorsal side. The chest wall, however, has a cylindrical shape. Because of this difference, the lung must expand its upper regions more than the lower ones which leads to a greater expansion of the non-dependent alveoli and a lesser expansion of the dependent ones. For me, the best way to understand this is to use the slinky model of the lung. If you imagine that the lung is like a slinky, which is broader at the base or the dorsal side than the apex or the ventral side, then if you look at the diagram here, you see the effect. When the patient is supine, the weight of the coils will gather at the dorsal part of the chest wall leading to greater pressure. However, if you then prone the patient, you can see that the weight becomes much more evenly distributed, allowing more even distribution of both ventilation and perfusion. So in the ARDS patient, we have the gravitational forces, the increased pressure from the wet lung and the shape matching issue, all combining to act in the same direction to have a detrimental effect on the dependent alveoli. However, if you look at the diagram, you can see that the prone patient suffers less from these effects. In the first diagram, you can see when gravity is not added in, that with the shape matching, the ventral alveoli are bigger than those on the dorsal aspect. If we then add gravity, the dependent alveoli close and the pulmonary blood flow is diverted to this area. So we are perfusing the less well ventilated alveoli. If we then prone the patient, blood flow is unchanged this is a known phenomenon. Human and animal studies have shown that in moving from supine to prone, blood flow in the dorsal regions is unchanged. The lung weight and pulmonary edema will move to the newly dependent part of the lung, which is now the ventral region. This results in recruitment of the dorsal alveoli with better perfusion. The ventral alveoli are reduced in size, but this effect is minimized by the effect of the shape matching. Overall, this leads to a more uniform transpulmonary pressure and regional inflation throughout the lung leading to better oxygenation. 
There is also some evidence that proning the patient removes some of the weight of the heart from the dependent lung. In the prone position, the weight of the heart will lie on the sternum and not the lung. It has also been shown to result in a significant, rapid and persistent improvement in oxygenation in the ARDS patient with heart failure. Proning the patient is also felt to remove some of the weight of the abdominal contents from the better ventilated posterior aspect of the lung. You can see here that the pressure, when in the supine position, is much greater on the dorsal part of the lung, with pressures of up to 20 centimetres of water. Water. However, when the patient is prone, that pressure now drops quite dramatically, allowing both better perfusion and ventilation. Turning a patient to the prone position does not always help to clear their carbon dioxide. This may be because the alveoli are becoming better aerated but not necessarily better ventilated. It has even been suggested that a decrease in PaCO2 is a better prognostic marker than an improvement in oxygen levels. The proposed mechanism is that in PaCO2 non-responders, the primary cause is diversion of the blood flow, whereas in PaCO2 responders, it is greater dorsal recruitment of the alveoli. How does proning help with the stress and strain on the lung? Stress is the tension developed in the lung's fibrous skeleton when a distending force is applied. And this is related to the transpulmonary pressure. And strain is the volume increase caused by the applied force relative to the resting volume of the lungs. This can be thought of as the ratio of volume change to the functional residual capacity. The more even distribution of transpulmonary pressure and regional inflation throughout the lung in the prone position is felt to relieve over distension, which can lead to volume trauma, causing ventilator-induced lung injury. And this evenness is also felt to reduce stress and strain. Ventilator lung injury has been shown to be reduced in animal studies in the prone position. And in humans with ARDS, there is also a beneficial effect. Another study suggested that prone positioning decreases alveoli instability and cyclic alveolar recruitment derecruitment. This is important because it's these shearing forces which can damage the already compromised alveoli. Biotrauma is as a result of the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and the recruitment of white cells. This can lead to multi-organ failure. A study has shown that the patient in the prone position had reduced inflammation and another found reduced severity of lung injury and reduced apoptosis in the lungs and the end organs. ARDS also seems to have several beneficial effects on the hemodynamics of the patient. It was shown that prone positioning increases cardiac preload, reduces right ventricular afterload and increases left ventricular preload. During the prone positioning, pulmonary arterial occlusion pressure is also increased and the transpulmonary pressure gradient, the difference of mean pulmonary arterial pressure relative to pulmonary arterial occlusion pressure, is reduced. So what are the possible results of proning for the patient when they're put back into the supine position? They may 1. Display an improved oxygenation compared to prone positioning. Two, maintain good oxygenation compared to how they were before prone positioning, but not so good as during prone, the majority of the patients. And three, display a deterioration and return to basal supine oxygenation. The last patients are also called prone dependent. Causes which may affect how well the patient responds might include the stage of the ARDS, the cause of the ARDS, the radiologic pattern, the severity of hypoxia and the patient's body habitus. This is not well understood currently. There are studies which have shown little benefit to proning the patient, but the more recent Proceva trial did show a benefit with the proviso that it is a skill which needs to have experienced hands. The latest American Thoracic Society guidelines recommend proning as one of the techniques to help the ARDS patient. From my experience, it does need a good coordinated approach and requires the nursing care to be adapted, but I think there are many merits to it and it should always be considered. I do have other videos for you to watch on my channel. Go and look at them if you think you might find them useful and I hope we speak again soon.